Hello guys and welcome, we're back for another episode here of The Adventures of Thane Forfan in the L555 Let's Play of Skyrim. Now, if you remember last time, last time we sent on a little bit of a side quest to come kill an orc which is now embedded in there, um, as part of our ambition to be Thane of Falkreath. Now, we're doing this because he says there is a plot of land available for sale, so this is all about the adventures of getting our house. Now, I didn't, I couldn't remember doing this many things for able to get a house, but apparently you need to do it, so we have to do it. So, um, as I'm led to believe this is a pretty impressive place that we can go and get a house, um, so that's why I'm pr predominantly wanting to get it in Falkreath. And from there, it means that we've got a nice crib where we can store all of our goods instead of being encumbered all the time. And poor Lydia being encumbered as well as she carries our birdings as she always does. So let's just open up into the realm of Skyrim and see where we end up. Now, I will be heading back to Falkreath to let the Thane know that we've done his chore for him by getting rid of these bandits and then we can see what we have to do next. Of course once the loading screens are done. Of course with this it will take an absolute age you know that I've started recording it's been pretty quick beforehand. So here we go we're outside here. Now I am just going to quick travel it. Um, sorry a uh, little fly just Scundered across its death there. So, just a bit of a map check where we are. So, we're here at Ember Shrad Mine. It's not far away from Riverwood and where we originally started the game now 13 episodes ago in Helgen. So, we're going to go back to Falkreath. I'm just going to quick travel it. Um, I know it's not very far, however, it's always worth it. It's, we've got it there, we've got it pinpointed. There's nothing else quicker uh, or on the way to it as we've travelled there before. So it may as well just quick travel and save the time. Now, from here, um, after we do this, we'll see if there's any more adventures for us to do. Hopefully, if there is any chores that they're not as tedious as the ones that we've just done. However, we shall see. And there's the, the guard that was looking for the dog earlier for the chap that's in here, can't remember his name. So we're going to go be going into the Jarl's Longhouse. Now if I remember from previous, let's, uh, previous times I've played through Skyrim, he's never usually here. He's usually just doing whatever he, well, whatever he wants. That must be the, the glory of being a, a Jarl, getting to do what you want. And I stand corrected. The one time I say that, he's actually sitting in his seat. Yes. What is it that you want? God, you sound so enthralled. I've killed the leader of uh, Ember Shrad. Teach them to stop paying me. Here, you deserve a reward for your service. Thank you. You know what? I like you. You're not afraid to get your hands dirty. I hereby grant you permission to purchase property in Falkreath Hold. Talk to my steward if you're interested. Oh. That's fine. That's all we need to do. See me again so sometime. we don't need I to speak to him anymore, speak. actually. So let's have a... Where's your thingy, Jigger? Is it you? No, you're the guard, aren't you? The Legion's always looking for strong, capable warriors. If you think you've got what it takes, our headquarters is in solitude. Okay. So that's the other half of the Stormcloak Rebellion. I'm the steward here. I serve under... Sidgear can sometimes act too quickly, but he does listen to Helvard and I. So that's given us a little task if we really want to join the Imperial Legion, which I've not decided on which one we're going to do yet. We need to go to Solitude. So, what well, does this say to Rania? I'd like to purchase a house. There's no house available, but I could sell you a fine piece of land where you could build your own house. Hmm. 
Sounds interesting. Let's take it. You won't regret it. Here's the title to your steading. Follow the road east from Fall Creek, then north at the crossroads. Turn left just past Pine Watch. Okie doke. Let's have a little look. So, we have now done it. We've got the initial standpoint for our first house, land, pole, whatever. So, I'm just going to um, go into quests. That's what let me about. There we go. So, let's have a little look at the miscellaneous. Visit your new property in Falkreath Hold. Now, because I don't know the map as proficiently as everyone else, there we go, Lakeview Manor. So, let's just take a little trot up that way and see what I've bought. So, this was the plan originally. I believe this is part of the DLC um, Heathfire. Possibly. Um, there was a certain... Yeah, good luck with that. Um, yeah, so it's part of the DLC where you could buy your own plot of land to, to build your house. Um, this and Part of this DLC as well, it was one of the smaller ones, um, I believe as part of it as well, it allowed you to adopt children, marry a wife, and something... Uh, straight off the road. Um, and there's something else. Uh, pets? Pets rings a bell, and of course building houses. So, as I was led to believe, there was three um, locations you could do this at throughout Fal uh, throughout Skyrim. You're a bit off the beaten track. Need something? No, I'm good. Who are you bodyguarding? There's literally no one here. Never mind. Anyway, we'll continue walking. Yes. Well, I think we've stumbled through here before. This must have been on the way here the first time. Yes, it is. I do remember it now, actually. So, we're actually... Hmm, this is going to be awkward to get to, isn't it? I can't remember. I can't ever remember buying the Falkreath Hold one. Um, I can't remember which one I've bought, actually. So, we'll... Okay. Don't remember killing that. This is someone's house, just get us a quick point marker just in case for the future. Pine watch. Oh. This horse has just adeptly killed someone for us. To bandit outlaw. It's meh, may as well. Let's see what he's got. And I'm over encumbered again. Also for <sighs> Hi horse, who are you? Steal, no, I'm not going to steal a horse because I know how that ends up. There we go, we can run again. So our house shouldn't be that far away, looking at the marker. Or the land. The land we run. So we're just going over this way. Ah, here's our, here's our plot of land here, apparently. So this must be a, over yonder. Lakeview Manor, there we go, we've discovered it. So, it's a pretty big bit of land we've got here, people. Um, don't know how far it stretches. I don't think it'll stretch any further. Ooh. Sorry, as I'm getting distracted, I may as well. Ah, oh, mother... Okay, I'll back off. Right, we'll deal with that later. Uh, I hate the. No, oh, thanks, Lydia. Just some. It's a mud crab, Lydia. A mother fudging mud crab. How far did it need to chase us? <sighs> right, anyway. It looks like it's pointing us to over here to use the drafting table. Let's have a little look. So buy lumber for building your used house. Use the drafting table to begin building your house. 
So, small house layout. I suppose we've got to start somewhere. So, we'll hit that. We want to create that at the moment. Use a carpenter's workbench to build the foundations for your house. Okay, so... Uh, ah, ha, ha, ha. We have string and wood. So this is where our house is going to be. Which is pretty rad. It's pretty small. But, how's the house? So, let's just say, use carpenter's workbench to... So, house foundation. You need 20 sawn log, which we have apparently. And 10 quarried stone. Or there's the wall framings, where you need 6 lo sawn log and 10 nails. So, quarried stone... Uh, let's have a beginner's game to homestead in. If in doubt, there's always a book. So, the beginner's guide to homesteading. If you're like most people, you've always dreamed of owning your own stead and, and building your own home. But where to start? Never fear, you you hold in your hands the guide to everything you need to know. Before long, you'll be gazing complacently across your well-tamed lands from the porch of your own manor home. Getting started. There's two pieces of vital equipment that prospective home owners need. Uh, the drawing table and a carpenter's workbench, which we've already visited both. Your drafting table is where you'll lay out the plans for each stage of your new house. Don't worry about making a mistake here, you can always change your mind and making a new plan costs you nothing. Remember, measure twice, cut once. That's a bit of a life rule. Always make sure you've done everything correctly the first time, measure it twice, so that if there's an irreversible part, that you have you make sure it's done right, basically. I know I kind of did it a bit there, but anyway. Continuing on, your carpenter's workbench is where you'll need to do the actual construction. Once you've settled on a plan at the drafting table, you can start building your house at the carpenter's workbench. Okay, that's what we've just done. Avoiding the common beginner's mistake, do not try and build the roof <laughs> without building the proper supports first. So basically, start from ground up. Do not try and build the roof with no ground. Yeah. So, space for the family. If you have a spouse or children, you'll certainly want to get the house livable state as soon as possible. Your loving spouse will no doubt make do with nothing more than a roof over her head and a bed to sleep in. But what about the children? Don't worry. All they'll need is a bed and or a chest or dresser to store their treasures as they will be perfectly content. Building materials, this is about that was just what you got, which I'm really needing to be honest to, to build it. However, build materials. You'll need lots of supplies to complete your house, but it isn't necessary to gather everything you need ahead of time, unless you're in a hurry. You can just build in stages as materials become available. You'll enjoy watching your home progress. Um, from dream to reality. The most common materials uh, you'll need are sawn logs, cut stone and clay. Luckily these are plentiful in Skyrim, in fact most building sites have one or more easily accessible source of clay and stone. So there must be one round about. For sawn lumber, any lumber mill owner will be glad to sell and deliver as much as you need. You need a lot of nails. Fortunately, even a novice blacksmith will soon find themselves turning iron into nails with ease. So that's maybe something we can do, which will make it quite easy, but we'll need iron ore for that, so keep, we'll keep an eye out for more of that. When you turn your to furnishing your completed house, you need a much wider variety of materials. Some of them, such as straw and glass, are commonly obtained from general goods stores. For the rest, the whole of Skyrim will become your general store. Hiring a steward. Once your estate is established, uh, well, well, we'll get. Okay. Oh, this is actually got it right. Okay, okay, okay. So what I'll do, I'll continue reading. Um, hiring a steward. Once your estate is well established, you may wish to consider hiring a steward to help manage your affairs. Um, a good steward can be invaluable from being a carriage driver to buying a cow to keeping you supplied with building materials freeing you to enjoy the fruits of your labours. Before hiring a steward, it's advisable to bring a potential 
candidate to your manor and observe whether they're a good fit for your requirements. Remember, you are putting the entire estate in their hands. You'll need someone that you can, can trust implicitly. Building your house. The rest of the guide will show you a preview of plans for each room that you might want to build. We'll just start with the small house because that's what we're going on to. Before you get too ambitious, gain confidence by building this tiny cottage. It is the perfect starter home and might turn out to be all you need. But don't worry, if you decide um, to keep building, you can remodel this into an entryway for the rest of your home. So as I said, it does look a little bit small to begin with. We'll, we'll leave that there because no one's going to take it. Um, so we'll start off with that. So what have we got in the chest? Clay, corundum, iron and quarry stone. So, another bit. What do we need here? So, ah, uh, okay, right. Right, I know I'm over encumbered at the moment, but we're about to come a lot lighter when we start building. So, use Carpenter's workbench. I'm gonna build the foundations. There we go. So, if we turn around now to see each day, if Lydia got out the plumbing road, there we go, there's the foundations for our house. Got a couple of steps. Sorry, another fly. This house is ridden with flies at the minute. I don't know why. Uh, must just be a time of year it is. But So we've built the foundations, which is a great start. Let's see. So we need the wall framing next. So we need 10 nails. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deposit some of the stuff in here. I think it'll be pretty safe here to be honest. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Just gonna put all the misc stuff in here. Uh, yeah, I'll put the third of that in. Oh, uh, no, that, 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 that. No, no, wait. All right, I'll take back on the way. So I need that. But well, funny feel I need that corundum ignit because it's giving me it for a reason. So where is there a furnace that we know of and is easy to access and get use of? of? Um, why run? I know there's one in there. Got a quick travel there. So on the shopping list is to make some nails. Now, the nails are going to be the, one of the crucial bits because we need to put it all together before we can start building. This is also going to take on, I don't know if this will actually help um, with another thing I want to do because ideally I want to be able to start improving my armour because I've realised that the armour that we've... Good for my crops. Never is. Okay, it's awful weird that you stand right behind me as I walk in, dude. God, right. Shut up! So, for those that in fact, actually, we'll wait, because if we wait till the right time, we're going to get a tutorial, and it'd be quite nice to go through the tutorial with a um, certain individual that's here, um, as I'll explain it probably a lot better than I will, so with shops, you generally need to wait till about 9, 9 o'clock-ish, before people start coming out, so just wait in here, see if they pop out, because she's usually standing out and about here. But it means that we'll get a full tutorial on what and here she comes around the corner here and um, this is the blacksmith of the white run forgery so let's just have a quick word i don't claim to be the best blacksmith in white run yorland greymane's got that on me man's steel is legendary all i ask is a fair chance that's fair enough do you work at the forge all day I that I do. I've got to if I hope to be as good as Yorland Greymane someday. In fact, I just finished my best piece of work. Did you really? It's a sword. I made it for the Jarl, Balgroof the Greater. It's a surprise. I don't even know if he'll accept it, but listen, could you take the sword to my father, Preventus Avenici? He's the Jarl's steward. He'll know the right time to present it to him. You okay, it. Thanks. So, what can you tell me about White Run? Mm, plenty. I'd say we're prosperous enough. Most folk don't go hungry if they're willing to work hard. The city's ruled by the Jarl up in Dragon's Reach. That's the fortress there, up on the tall hill. 
But you're probably more interested in your Vasker, Mead Hall of the Companions. Their deeds of war and valor are legendary. Hmm. Right, I think I might have to do this a little bit. Don't forget to check inside the shop if you need anything. Yeah, I might. Right, I'm just going up to Dragon's Reach because I've got a funny feeling I might need to do this first of all. Um, before they let me do the. So just going to be run up the hill. I'm just while doing that in the meantime. My guy's pretty exhausted anyway, so. Up we go towards Dragon Reach. So usually, I can't remember if you have to do this first or not, but um, you can get a bit of tutorial to smithing from the lovely Ardiana Vanshi. I'm terrible with names, so we'll just go with that in the meantime. Um, I wonder how long this will be. It seems to be quite quick loading. It's just an in-between screen, to be honest, so it shouldn't be that long. Here we go. Right, I believe from the previous speaking. I serve Jarl Balden. The Jarl is, as you can imagine, very busy. Perhaps I can assist. You. Yes, because it's actually you I'm looking for, not the Jarl. From Adrian? Adrian. Ah, this must be that weapon for the Jarl. Poor girl. So eager to prove herself. I'll present it to Balgruff when his mood is agreeable. Thank you. Please, take these few coins for services rendered. Okay, I don't think it was coins, but however, right, whatever. Enjoy your visit to Dragon's Reef. God damn it. Right. So while I'm going back to Adran, as it's apparently pronounced, um what's been happening in my life, to be honest, not a lot. Um today's my last night on on night shift before I've got a, a week off, which is gonna be great. I'm gonna be meeting up with some people, um going to be working on the Mazda so I can I know I've been saying the last few videos there's going to be a video coming up with the Mazda soon I finally got the time for I can just do it now because I've been pretty chalked up with work doing a bit of overtime and stuff so I can then get more presents for the Mazda so it's now looking more likely that it will happen well in fact it's not more likely it will happen um tomorrow Wednesday um in fact no it won't happen tomorrow because I'll be sleeping after night shift Days you get mucked up, it will happen Wednesday. I will record it, looking to get it up Wednesday night. So today is Monday. So in two days' time, there will be a master video up. It will be edited. It will be done basically, and um, because I'm not hanging about anymore, I need to get some videos up of it. So it's going to be a pretty nice wee video. I'm not going to say what it is. You'll find out when it eventually gets released. But we're back here. More inside. So do you need any help around the forge? I think it's the one they're looking for. Yes, actually. How about you smith me an iron dagger? Here's everything you need to make one. Go ahead. Okay, dope. So, Don't forget to check inside the shop. what I'll do is we'll go to the, I believe we need to go to the forge first because it's not giving as much a tutorial as what I thought. The bad forge is used to create new weapons and armour from raw materials. So, if we go down, there's an iron dagger, so it's done in categories here with regard to the actual type, or uh, the material of weapon. And then into what it actually is. So you've got hide, iron, studded, leather, jewellery, building materials, and misc. So that's a shell bug helmet, which is uh, looks pretty awful actually. But we're looking for iron. And here we've got a load of iron items. We've got banded iron shield, banded iron armor, normal iron arrow, 24 iron arrows, battle axe, boots. Dagger, this is one we're looking for. It goes on and on. You can get the gist of it. So, we're going to be looking at the iron dagger. That's what we want to make. That's a decent weapon you've made there. So, we've now got to bring the dagger to Adrian Evenshi. I don't claim to be the best. He, no, sure. Here's your Not dagger. Bad, but it's a little dull. How about you sharpen it up? You just need a bit of metal and the grindstone over there. Okay, so. Want it to sharpen it up, so the grindstone, uh, ah, here we go, as, as it looks, use the grindstone, so we'll start, whittle, 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 okay, so, we're looking at doing the iron dagger to make it fun, that dagger's super fun, so, I'm going to craft that, 
by pressing the X button we have improved our dagger. Bring the tempered iron dagger to a drown eventually. Right, so turn around. Hi. Good pieces. This looks good. You put time into your blades, they'll serve you well when you need them. You want to keep helping? How about you make some armor? Let's start by tanning some leather on the rack. Okay, we'll tan some leather. Don't forget to check inside the shop. If you need so it. use the tanning rack. Tan rack is used to turn animal hides into leather and to cut leather into strips. Both leather and leather strips are used in creating and improving weapons and armor. Okay, so we'll go to Misk. We'll get some leather first of all. There we go. Bring the leather to Adrian eventually. I help my father. Ah, good. A lot of weapons and armor need leather for straps fitting, that kind of thing. Let's see if you can make a hide helmet. Here's the rest of what you need. Okay, so I believe it is then. the work bench we'll need for that. Oh no, did it have hide in here? We kind of already went to the blacksmith. Yep, to the blacksmith floors to make a hide helmet. Which you would think would just. <sighs> Never mind. So, yeah, hide helmet. We want to create this. There we go. So, we'll bring that bad to Adrian. I you think all the council might. Here's a hide helmet. I should hire you to be my assistant at this rate. Hey, money, money, money. Let's improve the fit. Take this leather to the workbench over there. Okay, that's fine. She just stands there and I'll do all the work. So the workbench here is used for actually improving armor. So we've actually got a fair bit of things here that we could improve. Out of curiosity. Hmm? Anyway, uh, the hide helmet is what we need to do because that's what she was wanting. Go and improve it. There we go. So that's the list of everything that I can improve. Got some good pieces out here if you're looking So we'll turn Inside. round again, take the tempered hide helmet. Out with I've tempered you the helmet. Talent. Keep working at your craft and you'll be a fine smith one day. Ta. Why don't you keep that dagger and helmet? Maybe you will remember me when you're making Skyforge steel, huh? Oh, I'm probably sure you're gonna be much better than me at it anyway. However, so don't forget to check inside the That's a general brief overview. This contraption here, the smelter, as you can imagine, is just for turning ignits into ore and I don't think I actually have oh wait a minute tell a lie got gold iron Orchilium. this is going to save us a bit of weight as well by the way just for all the ores that we've got got two malachite <laughs> Find moonstone and silver ignite. There we go. So there we go. We've melted down some of our stuff, so that's probably save us a bit of weight as well. We're going to go to the forge now because we need to make some nails. Now, now down in building materials, we have a hinge, iron fittings, lock, and nails. So I've got lots of iron ignites, so I'm going to create. Forty nails, a lock, two iron fittings, two hinges, and our smithing is increased, so this does help. Iron fittings, we've got another set of nails in it. Uh, iron fittings, hinge, iron fittings, iron fittings, nails, and another set of nails actually. So we've got a lot of building materials here. I'm going to quick travel back to our. Uh, Manor, Lakeview Manor, which is all the way. Is it? No, nope, Riverwood, Guardian Stone. Here we go, Lakeview Manor. So I'm just going to quick travel here. By the way, guys, I would be very appreciative if anyone knows how to stop fruit flies to hit me up with a message because it's absolutely killing me with all these stupid small flies that are about the place. I think it's because near where I live in Perth, there's a lot of fields that have been turned up at the moment. As things are starting to, to be processed and the likes of potatoes and fresh fruit, things like that. There's a lot of, lot of farms about us and I think because everything's getting harvested, all the flies are now starting to wither out and try to find food elsewhere other than the fields or whatever, I don't know. But it's a pain in the butt with them all here. I'd like to get rid of them humanely as possible, but if not, whatever gets rid of them. I'm not that fussed. 
so here we are at the carpenter's workbench and it was the house wall framings that we need so we, if we just turn around again now we can see we have now got some supports so we've got one two three four five so eight posts in total which is going to hold up everything in our house what's this over here oh is this all of our sawn logs ah uh, must be log pile so it's 13. yeah so anyway uh, that's all the log piles there, so that's how many we've got left. I was wondering how we'd somehow inherited some, but hey oh. Uh, now, there's something else we can build now. House walls, is we need four clay. But I know I left some clay in here, didn't I? Yep, I did. I'll take that clay back. Right, carpenter's workbench. House walls, we're going to use some clay. And as we look around again, it's starting to take shape now, isn't it? I'm um, over encumbered, I'm not going to go too far in, but basically we filled it in between all of the wooden posts that are in there. It's got a nice little window slats, almost like archery holes, but however, hey, let's have a look. House floor. Okay, we'll do that because we'll need that. House roof framing. The floor, uh, I'll show you in a second anyway. So. Basically, I'm still over encumbered. So the flooring puts the lovely tiled flooring on, um, as opposed to just a concrete base. And we now have the framing for the top, which means I think we're only two steps away from getting a completed house. And if you haven't worked out what the two steps are, uh, roof and door. So we'll do the roof. Aha, and house door, so we turn around now. Ta-da, lovely nice roof. All we need is the door. So, that'll be our last bit, is using a house door which requires an item fit and sore log lock, two hinges and two nails, so that's why I made some locks, made a lock at least, while I was at the forge. So we'll create this item and there we go. So. I'm now no longer over encumbered, which is great. And we have our completed house. Dun, 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 dun. And this is our, is it Riverview Manor? Yeah, I think so. Um, but this is our completed house now. So if we do open the Lakeview Manor, We can find we have a completed ish house so important thing is is that it actually comes with a chest but we'll start dumping stuff into immediately because it means we can lighten up basically so we can dump that in dump that in dump that in we'll keep all of our arrows that we can. Drop the staff, drop the staff. April, we'll put that in. Just realised that we actually have upgraded the Elven Gauntlets now, so we'll actually put that on to get our armour rating a bit further up. Put our shoes in, put the gold rings, everything else that's not required. Have I got necklace on? Oh, I've got amulet talos, so that's it. Um, novice robes, scar scaled armour, skull boots, skull coat, skull hat, that and that. If you look at our weight, it's coming down massively. All of these ones here, the, the random potions which I'm not using yet, we'll just pop them in. Weave the healing. Put our scrolls in because I don't use them. Uh, yeah, we're just going to stick all the food in as well. Because the idea is to get as light as possible. All of our ingredients. I might go into like sort of. Um, what do you call it? 
making potions and things like that, but not at the minute. Uh, books, oh, I can't get rid of a lot. I don't know. Not a lot there I can get rid of. Keys don't weigh anything. Misc items, this is what we're going to drop a lot in. Garnet, goat horns, gold, heart stones, we'll drop them in. We'll leave the hinge and everything in here at the moment. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it like this and then we'll come back to it in another episode. And then that way we can just get things basically moving on. We'll maybe focus an episode on it. There we go. Corey is much lighter now. I've just remembered that I've left some stuff outside. Of course, in our box before we actually manage to get in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this episode up here. Just ending up our house buying episode and building of the house. And then in the next episode, I think it might be a good idea actually to go back to Solstein. As we've tied up a few bits and bobs here, so we've got somewhere we can leave all of our miscellaneous items that we want to keep but not essentially use and also we've um built a house so it means that we can go back on adventures in soul steam and not be worried about it at all so uh where do we leave it yet oh it's in this chest so we'll take all that oh, why is it putting me on the map use it error right so let's go back inside because I know if it's inside that it's saved and that there's no chance whatsoever of it disappearing apart from lack of a corrupted memory, which Dutch would I don't want to happen. So we'll go into the chest, go back to miscellaneous items and we'll just drop all of our scales, leave the golden lockpicks and there we go. So we're light as ever, jumping about in our house. It's space, it's mine, it's mine. This is how I feel at the moment because the parents are away on holiday as well just uh, today. So this is what it's like. I can do whatever I want, jump about, jump around, jump up, up, up around. Yeah, so this is where today's episode is going to end up. We're going to end up leaving it up in the house. Um, I'm going to save up here now. So for the next adventure, as they were going back to Soul Steam, I don't need to buy lumber. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here. Um, remember to like and subscribe to keep up with all the latest updates. Um, there will be a video on Wednesday with the Gardner MX5. Um, but this is everything for this episode. So this is Corey signing off. Um, I'll catch you all on the flip side.